sitting here once again with Brian from Jericho Energy Ventures. And Brian, there's a lot of questions about the future of hydrogen. The question is, do you see a world where hydrogen and EVs can actually come together? We do, Michael. We see a lot of good things in that space. I mean, EVs have been really taking the world by storm when it comes to passenger vehicles. Um, there is more and more and more things coming to market every day as we look to electrify the auto industry, specifically the passenger auto industry. But think about a world where if you bring those two together, hydrogen and batteries in the same vehicle, it'd be an amazing opportunity to extend the range of those vehicles. Batteries get heavy the more you put on a vehicle. So you're limited as the amount you can store. So that's why you see so many in cars because cars can, can carry just people. But when you go to shipping, when you go to larger format, you know, last mile trucks, um, long haul trucks, industrial equipment, you need range, right? They're a lot heavier than this vehicle. So imagine a world where you had a blended system. You had batteries and you had fuel cells yeah. in one vehicle reduce the weight, extend the range, and now you have a zero emission vehicle bringing you the best of both worlds. We very well said. Very real. We think that is a market that is ripe for opportunity. Yes. It, while, while a lot of people think of these technologies working kind of in parallel towards heading toward a greener future, it's important for people to understand the crossover they might have and the way they might actually play together. Very much so. We've been conditioned as a society. Remember, when we fill our cars up, with gasoline. We think it's a five minutes experience, but it's more like 30 seconds. So imagine, right? So even with hydrogen, filling up with hydrogen is five minutes, and that would be considered slow once you experience what five minutes is like at the pump. EVs, the challenge for EVs has always been, you know, the ability to get distance and not have to spend hours charging your vehicle. So imagine if you didn't have to worry about either, brought them together in one solution, yeah. And that solution gave you plenty of range where you never had that anxiety of, oh, I can't run the air. I can't run the heat. I'm going to run out. Traffic is too much. Can't take yeah. the electric vehicle. So now the two together, we think that's the perfect match. It's, it creates the perfect opportunity to decarbonize um, the transportation and the trucking industry. Yeah, very well. Again, very well said. They both kind of cover each other's strengths and weaknesses very well and kind of shifting forward and looking at what the world's been doing with hydrogen lately. You're seeing a lot more focus on it. You're like the UK thinks hydrogen energy could be its key for a net zero future. Do you, do you think they're, they're right there? I think they've done a great job putting hydrogen at the forefront of the transition for the UK. They have been pushing that transition. Um, and they've had their pain points just like everyone else around the transition. Nothing changed. Change is never easy. With hydrogen, the UK sees the opportunity to blend that with its extensive wind, offshore wind renewables mm -hmm. and create an environment where they are decarbonizing everything that goes on there. Now, hydrogen for them is a, is a piece by piece play. So you're seeing them do it on the industrial side now. They had their big announcement where they're focusing on decarbonizing their industries. Um, they are very focused on green hydrogen in particular. They have not supported blue hydrogen very much to date. They are very green hydrogen focused there, which is awesome for an industry, but tricky to get to without a transition through the color scheme of hydrogen. True, true. You know, it's, it's going to be hard to beat the energy concentration of hydrogen. I don't even know if you can, but you're even seeing places in the U.S. like New Mexico now going all in on hydrogen energy. So how long do you think the timeline is before we really start seeing more places picking up on it? I think everything takes time, right? It's a transition. It won't be minute by minute, day by day. It'll be month by month, year by year, but you're seeing the buy-in across the board, right? You have the greatest opportunity probably of our lifetime in terms of the energy community. You have the regulatory environment bought in, you have the government, you have the corporate environment, you have the investment environment. If you think about it, you have $80 billion now sitting in ESG funds, the most money ever raised for ESG in 2021, all focused on this transformation. It's never easy, but when you have everything pushing in the same direction, you, know, you get tremendous effect. Um, nothing will happen overnight, but like New Mexico, you need to push forward, right? New Mexico is one of our biggest producing states from an oil and gas perspective. 
and they're moving in on hydrogen because they see it as an opportunity for the future to keep their environment clean, to keep the air clean there, to continue to deliver energy in a cost-effective way, but do it in a clean way. So very exciting. When you see states that are big oil and gas states, and we've known that for a long time because of our hydrocarbon routes moving in this direction, I think it gives you reason to, to realize that this is not going away. This is not fleeting. This is the future. Very well said. Again, so yes, while there is some inertia in a lot of these industries, hydrogen is now looking at and the technology is now there to where it can be a real disruptor and people are starting to turn their eyes to it. So Brian, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for walking through these points. Anything else you want to add? Any closing statements? No, thanks for having us. We, we really enjoy the updates and, and hope to get more to do more in the near future. Awesome, Brian. Thank you again for coming on and thank you everyone for watching. Have any questions for us here at Jericho Energy? Let us know. We'll happily dive into them for you. But for now, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks, Michael.